hello again. Here is a Toshiba HD DVD player. The model number is HDE1. And this is the back of the player. It's a bit of a budget machine that came out in early 2007, so at the beginning of the year. And uh, the model number is here as well, so it's HDE1KE. So this is a model that was available in the UK. Not many outputs on this, um, so the sound output is really constrained to using the optical output. And um, it's got HDMI output here, um, so that's reasonable to have. And the general um, sort of composite and component outputs and S-video there. So it's also unable to output in 1080p, so it prefers to output in 1080i. And uh, this makes it not a highly sought after player. It's um, not a bad player when it works. So I picked this up quite cheap and uh, unfortunately it could um, only play DVDs. It couldn't play HD DVDs. So what I did is I took it apart in the first instance and took the drive out and gave the um, lens a clean and uh, put it all back together again. And unfortunately it still would only play DVD. It couldn't play HD DVD. So it was obviously one step away from going to the rubbish tip. And uh, I thought, well, what can I try? Went on the lookout for a cheap Xbox 360 drive. And these actually came out just before this particular model. So in, in 2006. And I thought, well, maybe there's some mileage in trying to get this drive out and put it into this machine and see if it works. So uh, that's what I attempted to do. And um, the trickiest thing actually on these is to uh, take the case apart. So what you have to do is you have to ply this bit off first, this side off, and then you have a number of torque screws uh, which you have to undo. This picture here is of the drive that was shipped with the machine. So the, the machine itself was released in January um, 2007 so this would have been several months later that this one was assembled and this is the drive that it was shipped with so uh, the model number here to look for is SD-E802A and there we have a version number 103 and a ROM version TS19 so that's the uh, that's the one that came with the actual machine this is the drive uh, from the Xbox 360 which I took apart um, so it's a standalone drive that you could get as an add-on to play your HD DVD movies. I took that apart and uh, and this is what I tried to do. So I tried to swap the drives over and when I switched on the DVD player, the HD DVD player, these are the codes that I saw. So this obviously isn't good. This error code is obviously complaining. Um, probably I thought about the, uh, the actual board version, the PCB, and uh, I thought to myself it probably, the rest of it is probably similar. So the actual head assembly, um, it's probably fine. It's probably just the fact that the PCB revision, the software on the actual board is not talking properly to the main board that you can see in this picture. To sort this out, I decided I would take them apart. So I took both of these drives apart and um, what actually made me try it in the first place was the fact that the connector, as you can see here, is, is the same as you see on the 360. And this is uh, what the inside of one of these 360 kind of caddies look like so uh, they're a little bit of a pain to get apart but once you've got the initial white edge plastic off there's some torque screws and you can um, get to the rest of it and this is the connector on this 360 add-on unit which outputs USB on the back here and also the power to drive it so um, you don't need that board but the connector here is the same as you'll see actually inside the uh, HD DVD player so moving on this is what the inside looks like and uh, this is the one that I wanted to swap out and I knew that I needed to just take this PCB board out and uh, you can see there are some soldered connections here so these are okay to pull out but it's the soldered ones you have to have a second think about and you can see them on here. So what these do is these actually just go underneath the board um, it's sort of held in by a, a bracket which then the wires then go up into a switch here. So I didn't want to do any soldering. The best way to get around this, I thought, was just to clip the uh, plastic. So I'll show you what I did. Here, you can just break this plastic. It's just a retainer. Uh, the, the wires can be held in here, and, uh, and this wire doesn't particularly go anywhere. So um, you can just use a bit of sellotape or, or, some, um, or something sort of sticky just to hold it in place. So I've just got the Xbox 360 drive in here 
resting. Um, now I have swapped the metal covers over, so they are the original metal covers. It's only because the Box 360 covers got a little bit bent and uh, these just make for the right fit. So uh, that's why I've done that. But um, as you can see, it's definitely the Xbox 360 drive. I'll just turn this on. This is the uh, Toshiba, welcome. And I've plugged the HDMI into the monitor for my computer. Be a bit careful with the power supply at the back of the drive here. Uh, you don't really want to um, be touching that. So just take precautions when you're doing stuff like this. You can see the screen starting there and uh, we get the no disk. Okay, so let's try opening the drive. It's got the telltale uh, gray grayness of the uh, 360. Let that load. This is the main PCB board, which is a bit like a PC in itself. There's some compound being put around some of these chips, probably to uh, stop anyone reverse engineering some of this uh, code off, off the chips. And uh, as you can see, there's some pretty hefty heat sinks as well, and quite a lot on that board. But uh, I think you can count that as, as a success. So anyone who wants to save one of these old machines is uh, quite able to do so just by finding an old Xbox 360 drive and substituting the PCB board. Now I don't know uh, if the later Toshiba machines used a slightly different drive so it may not be possible with a newer machine but uh, with this model and um, probably any other models around this time it probably is doable. So there's the famous uh, sort of menu on the side here. There you go. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and um, thank you for watching. 